This video is called the parenthesis smile. And so what this basically means is when you look at a person, the nasal labial smile line um, is what extends from the nose down around the mouth. And that's also known as the nasal labial groove. Uh, actually semantically to be more pure with this is that this is the groove and the fold uh, is actually the external component on the outside area. And I sort of divide the fold into the canine, which is the upper third of the fold, the central line, and then the lower line. Why do I make those divisions? Because they, they're areas that I try to correct. The reason I thought of this video is I did a lady yesterday who had this uh, parentheses smile. And, and so what that is, it's a, it's a curved etch of skin around the edge. So I think nasolabial grooves are way overdone. I think people are always trying to fill that fold when you don't even need to fill the fold. It's, there are better areas to do. But the one type of fold that I think really ages you and doesn't look pretty is a, a parentheses crease. It looks like a crease around the sides of the mouth. And so I target that first. To get a result in that, you really need a needle to really get almost not, you're not intradermal, but you're just, right at the base of that dermis to really elevate and fill that zone as best as possible. The, um, and I use Restylane, Restylane Lift, and sometimes I'll use Restylane Silk and Cross Hatchet. If you listen to what cross hatching is, listen to my, my 15 minute video on dynamic fillers. But that's a target zone. So, so if you say, you know, when I give aesthetic advice, I look at certain areas that are aesthetically important. The lady I did yesterday, I did her dynamic, sorry, excuse me, I did her, um, her parentheses lines, and then what was interesting is after I did some other changes around her jawline, I looked at her upper fold and I wanted to actually fill the upper third and upper two thirds because the rest of it started to look older after I made the lower portion younger. The one thing I try to do when I'm in the um, canine area in the middle fold is I use a cannula because the cannula re, uh, really almost eliminates, I shouldn't say eliminate, but virtually eliminates a risk of intra um, uh, vascular injection, which is a risk of necrosis. There's a labial artery right here that in this area, if you put a needle there, there's a very, very small risk of necrosis. But uh, fortunately, I've never seen in this area, but it is a risk that is definitely present. So I use a needle here because the risk is very low and I need to get intradermal to, or I shouldn't say intradermal, very close to the dermis down here to manage that issue. And up in this zone, I'm using a cane, I'm using a um, uh, using a cannula to fill that area. One word of advice is if someone's got a big, very big cheek, you want to be careful feeling the canine because that canine fill can actually augment that central cheek. So if they have a very depressed cheek and they have a deep canine fossa, it's a perfect mix for me because I can avoid putting in the anterior cheek, which makes people look weird, and putting in the canine to help offset that zone and improve the transition into the upper lip.